Coming back to fitness or starting a new sport can be daunting and requires patience. It can be tempting to just jump right in and up your miles really quickly. And that might actually work for the first week or two or the first ride or two before it all ends rather badly. Well, we've got all of the points covered to help you increase your cycling distance. Okay, I'll confess that when I do get back on my bike, usually after that winter is well and truly gone, I'm someone who just likes to get out there and go and do a big ride. However, it usually ends in me getting a little bit grumpy at my lack of fitness, becoming rather exhausted and getting sore in lots of areas. That means I then need to have a week or two off the bike and end up back at square one. So I can say I have truly tried and tested the method of just get on your bike and ride. And it doesn't work for many reasons. So today we're going to be covering all the things that you need to consider in order to help you cycle further. Build gradually. This may seem obvious, but it's so important that I think we should start here. If you want to build up to consistently and comfortably riding longer, then it's important to gradually increase your mileage. I mean, this is exactly how training works. Your muscles, your body, your fitness, and your pressure points need time to adapt to spending more time in that saddle. And the way to do this is to progressively overload them and then recover and get stronger in the time in between. This is how training works, and this is how adapting to riding longer works. Now, you can do this by adding 20 to 30 minutes to your long ride each week, and you will gradually, over time, get more and more comfortable doing that long ride. Or, if you don't have time for a longer ride, it's actually your total time in the saddle for the week that is gonna make the biggest difference. So even if you're only doing shorter sessions of an hour or a little bit more than an hour, as long as you're progressively increasing the amount of time you're in the saddle each week, you'll find that you're better able to ride further. The longer you spend on the bike, the more accustomed you're naturally gonna to become to the position. Your shoulders will start to get stronger, your seat bones will become used to that pressure, your hands will become accustomed to the bars. But it's not just about riding more and more miles in order to increase your endurance. In fact, it's far better to Consider certain aspects and train smarter. It'll help you reach your goal far quicker. Include interval training. So working at a higher intensity for shorter periods of time. This will help to increase your cycling fitness quickly and is a great way to be efficient with the time you do have. It's also important to work on your strength on the bike by doing hills or riding in a big gear at a low cadence. For more training sessions on the bike, check out our cycling workout videos. Finally, learn your pacing. When you're doing that one longer ride per week, you want to try and make sure that you keep it at a consistent pace throughout. And it's fine for it to be a bit steadier. Think of it as keeping it at a conversational pace. That is, unless you're riding up a steep hill. If you're gonna be riding further and spending more hours in the saddle, you wanna be comfortable or as comfortable as you can get sitting on a bike saddle. Now, a lot of this will naturally happen as you increase your mileage in your training, but that'll only get you so far. There are some specific areas that need attention. The overall fit of you on your bike is the first place to look. First up, have you got the right size bike for you? Is your saddle at the correct height? How's the stack height for your flexibility and your goals? I mean, if you do have the time or money to go and get a bike fit, they can be invaluable. And we've done quite a bit of content on that in the past. So go and check that out if you are interested. But then there's several things that you can change yourself. And that's very much about the areas where you have key contact points, such as your saddle. Now it might have been addressed in a bike fit, but you need to make sure that it is comfortable when you're riding it for longer periods of time and it's easy to think oh the softer the better but that is actually a myth when it comes to bike saddles as if your saddle is too soft and you're sat on it for a considerable amount of time then it basically will squash down and the pressure points will then be in the wrong place and it can end up meaning that a softer saddle is more uncomfortable so you really need to play around speak to the experts speak to friends and find out what they ride and hopefully you can find the correct saddle for you Tire pressure is also an area to look at for all rides, not just long rides. But if your tire is too hard for your weight or your tire width, it can really make your ride feel bumpy and uncomfortable. And that will really wear on you in a long ride. 
Of course, the same is true for a tire that is too soft. It will cost you a lot of energy. In order to maintain that good position on the bike, you're going to need strong core muscles. Those muscles that basically hold your middle together from your hips to you to your shoulders. And you might be thinking, well, why? Because I'm basically sat down on a bicycle. Well, if you do go for a longer ride, you might start to notice that your lower back is aching or your neck and your shoulders. And that could be because those muscles aren't working together to help you keep that solid position. And then you can start to do excessive movements to compensate or putting more strain on areas that really don't want that strain. So that's why you need to really make sure you've got that nice, strong core. Beyond your core, you can work on leg strength in the gym if your cycling time happens to be limited. Doing compound exercises such as squats and deadlifts will make you a more robust athlete, as well as that leg strength relating nicely to cycling strength. It is common sense that as you ride further and longer, you need to pay more attention to your fueling and hydration to keep your stores topped up. Having a fueling plan for your long ride is an important part of this. Knowing what you're gonna eat, carrying it with you and when you're gonna eat it. And the same goes for hydration. Making sure you're carrying enough fluid and that you're actually drinking it can make a big difference to how much you enjoy those long rides. And fueling for a long ride also includes pre-long ride and post-long ride. You need to make sure your fuel stores are topped up before you go out for that long ride so that you can really enjoy it. And similarly, when you come back, you're obviously gonna to need to focus on recovery a bit more because you've been out there for longer. So you need to make sure you're getting in some recovery fuel as soon as possible after that long ride. On to kit, I'm talking about your kit as well as your bike's kit. But probably the most obvious one has to be your cycling shorts. Make sure that you've got a decent pair that have a really good chamois, but also fit well. And that can take a little bit of trial and error sometimes. And then onto your bike. First, you need to make sure it's in good working order as that will reduce the chance of any mechanicals whilst you're out on the road. But however well you do look after it, sadly, they can be inevitable. So make sure you've got a decent repair kit either in your back pocket or in a bag behind your saddle that can allow you to fix a puncher and carry on on your ride. And it's just law of averages that as you start to ride longer or you're on the road for a longer period of time, the chance of something going wrong does increase. So just make sure you're prepared. Long rides can be peaceful and provide some valuable me time, but they can also get a little bit boring. If you're finding that your long rides are a bit boring, maybe find a buddy or join a cycle club or a triathlon club who you can join for their long rides. But you have to be disciplined here because you don't wanna rapidly increase your mileage goals just to fit in with your mates. That is a recipe for disaster. Also, if you are regularly doing long rides, changing your route up can keep it interesting and fun. Now, that's another reason to join a club or join your mates, because they can show you new routes that you've never heard of before. Or you can use apps like Strava's heat map or Commute to plan a new route. Just try and keep it to routes that are popular so that you don't end up on a muddy track, because that's the wrong kind of fun. Finally, I want to ask you a question. Why do you want to increase your cycling distance? If you can't answer that, then I suggest that you find a goal that will help keep you motivated and keep you on track. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed this and you're gonna get out on your bike and ride just a little bit further next time. If you have, we'd love it if you want to support the channel. You can do that by hitting that like button. And if you're not yet a subscriber, well, click on the globe.